Hello, everybody. Welcome back again. Welcome to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mary. We got Tilo coming in. And if you're watching on social media, guys, if you can write hashtag live, if you're watching live, hashtag replay, if you're watching replay, that would be great. So Tilo is finishing there his audio. So we're going to get going with this. We're gonna talk about many negative opinions are just a confession in disguise. And yesterday there was, Romana shared with me um, a post that it was talking about this and I loved it. So I just changed it a little bit and I adjusted and I wanted to, I put it on my profile and I wanna to talk today about this. It just came up today and I loved it. So I wanna talk about this because this is normally something that really affects a lot of people out there and doesn't allow them to be able to do the things they would like to do. So what happens is imagine that you are thinking of starting a relationship, you're thinking of changing jobs, you're thinking of uh, starting your business or whatever it is, guys, that you're looking to do to change in your life. And then suddenly maybe a best friend, uh, your partner, maybe family member, somebody comes over and says, you know what, Tommy, uh, I don't think this is good for you. You know, Tommy, I don't think this will work. You know, I think this is something that you're crazy or, and they start giving you their opinions around whatever you are looking to achieve. Who hasn't had that in the past, guys? Type a one in the chat. If you can, Thilo, I know you're driving, so don't worry. How are you, Thilo? So guys, if you're watching this and you can, Right, type a one in the chat if it has happened to you in the past that you shared with people what you were going to do. And suddenly you had family members, loved ones, friends speaking bad about what you were going to do. And in a way, telling you that this is not going to work, that this sounds crazy, that it's not a good idea, that you stay where you, sh you should stay where you are. Right. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Aelia. There we go. Thank you, Mary, for sharing that. So, Many times we got people giving us their opinions and many times we're looking for it, but sometimes we're not even looking for it and they gave us their opinions. And there's a lot of people, that's why I, in, in the post that Romana gave me, shared with me, said like all of it. And the truth is not all of it, but many negative opinions are just a confession in disguise. So what does that mean exactly, guys? That when somebody tells you, hey, Tommy, this is not a good idea. Hey, Tommy, this is not going to work. I don't think this, you should do this. You should wait. You should do this. You should that. In many cases, not all of them, in many cases, these people are talking from their own fears, from their own limitations, and this is important to understand, guys, because, again, many times we look for friends, we look for family, for a partner to support us in an idea, and they come down and they're like, you know what, Tommy, I don't think this is going to work. I wouldn't try it. Stay where you are, whatever. And they're mostly talking about their own limitations instead of your own limitations. So if somebody starts talking about their own limitations, whatever they're saying, it is kind of a confession. They're telling you what they're scared of. They're telling you what are the limitations they have about themselves, even though they're not even realizing what they're doing. Did that make sense, guys? Type a two in the chat if that makes sense. When people talk about bad ideas and different things like this, normally it's because they are telling you about their own unresolved issues, their own limitations, their own fears. So it's important to recognize this, and this is that's why I say many, and I didn't say all, right? Why? Because there are people that might bring a valid point to the table. The thing is that you got to be ready to deal with those things. Because again, what happens to a lot of people, they have self-doubt about what they're going to do. So they start sharing it, looking for support. But unfortunately, many times they don't find support. They find people kind of questioning, there we go, I was looking for the right word, questioning what they're going to do. So when people start questioning, if you have self-doubt, you're going to start doubting even more. Because the truth, guys, if I tell you, hey, if you cook, I don't know, this on the oven, you know, in the next eight minutes, pizza in the oven, if it's not, of course, you know, um, 
from the freezer, maybe even from the freezer might take a little bit more, but you know, you put a pizza in the, in the oven and you know that in eight minutes it's gonna be ready. If I tell you that it's gonna take half an hour, you already know that it's gonna take eight minutes because you did it so many times that you know that that is gonna be ready in eight minutes. And there's doesn't matter what I say or do that you're gonna still believe what you do already. Hasn't that happened in, in the past, guys, when you know something because you have tested it, you are you have really confirmed it that no matter what others say, they don't move you from where you are, what you think about that. Type a three in the chat, guys, if that has happened in the past. When people come in, tell you something that you're so sure that they don't even make you doubt whatever they're saying. So whenever you don't doubt what you're thinking or saying, it's because you're 100% sure of that. The problem is when you're not 100% sure and somebody starts, again, bringing negative opinions to what, whatever you're thinking of doing. So suddenly you start doubting. And many times what we do, we tend to, doubt, to, to blame the other person. Oh, Tommy, now you're making me doubt about it. No, you already had the doubt, but you were not aware of it. Listen to that again, guys. You already had the doubt and now you are realizing you're more aware of it. This is important to recognize because you need to own to become responsible of whatever you're thinking or saying. You are responsible. So if you're doubting, you are doubting. Nobody else can make you doubt. You are the only one responsible for making yourself doubt. So we gotta be very careful with negative opinions, but it's most of the times, guys, People are talking about their own way of seeing an event, life, or whatever it is, guys. Most people are talking from their own limitations, false or negative beliefs. It has nothing to do with you. And that's why you got to be very careful because many times we're going to get a negative opinion out of somebody that is talking about their own experience, their own history their own mindset. And it's not the same as yours, guys. And this is the problem because now, although you were doubting it, now you might doubt it even more because of what this person is telling you. So this is what I want to talk today because again, we need to say, okay, I'm going to get what this person is saying. I'm going to get this opinion, but I'm going to realize, I'm going to try to accept that there's a big chance, right? that whatever they're saying, they're talking about themselves and not about actually me. Because for them, it might be a bad you know, idea to quit your job and start a business on your own or to you know, start this new relationship, right? Because maybe you broke up maybe a month ago, two months ago, six months ago. Now they're like, oh, I think it's too fast or whatever. Maybe they're talking about themselves. And the truth is most of the time they're talking about themselves. So it's very difficult to really get good feedback from others because most people have their own unresolved issues and they find it very difficult to separate their own unresolved issues from your unresolved issues. So what they're gonna do many times is they're gonna project on you their own unresolved issues. And that's when a lot of people start doubting themselves because already they have some doubt, but this adds to the doubt. It makes them feel you know, that they, it's not a good time, whatever. And there's a lot of people not seeking what they would like to do because according to what other people think, it's wrong. You know, it's not the best time right now. You shouldn't be changing jobs. You shouldn't, you know, look for another relationship. You shouldn't, you know, quit your relationship. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. So the idea is listen to others if you want, guys. But you need to understand that most of the times they're talking about themselves and they're not talking about you. To be able to talk about you, they have to be in a very aligned place where they're like, okay, tell me, you know, Tommy, what is it that you want? I want to change jobs. Why do you want to change jobs? What are the pros and cons on that? And a lot of people cannot be there into just listening to what you got to say and just ask questions so that you can find your best answer. And this is one of the biggest things that I do with you guys, guy, when I work working one-on-one -on -one mostly and even in group settings, I help people really figure out what's best for them. Do I tell them what to do? No, of course not. 
I have people that have asked me, Tommy, should I walk away from this relationship? Should I quit my job? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I tell them, look, it would be, you know, I would love to be able to tell you what to do, but it will be very reckless on my side because now you need me to make decisions in your life. And that's not the idea. The idea of this work, guys, is to be able to help you get rid of the garbage, get rid of the negatives that you might have, the limitations that you might have, to make the best decision for you. Not to tell you what to do, because telling you what to do, most of the times it's coming from my own experience, my history, my way of seeing life, and it might not be the best for you. So guys, it's very important to understand this because again, if you're getting negative opinions, understand that that person most of the times are projecting, they're confessing their own unresolved issues or limitations. It has nothing to do with your plans, but this could, on your side, you are responsible of making you decide not to move forward in something that you think is best for you because somebody else said that it's not. So you got to be very careful with this, guys, so that you can really check your own limitations, check your own negative stories, and see if what the other person is saying is something that we can take, or we just need to discard and understand that it has to do with them and not with me. So let me know, guys, with a four on the chat, if this makes sense, what I'm saying Guys on social media, on this platform, this is making sense that when people are telling you about these type of things, it's more about them than about you. And I hope this can help you make better decisions, guys, in your life. Because if you're listening to everybody around you, most of the times you're listening to people that don't have your shoes, didn't go where you didn't go through what you went through, don't understand how you're thinking. So you're asking somebody that help you decide what to do when they don't even know what you're thinking, what you're going through. One thing is to really put them in your shoes to be able to understand what you're going through. And from there might say, okay, if I were you, as many people say, if I were you, but most people, when they say, if I were you, they're talking about themselves still. So the idea is, hey, looking at what you're telling me, it seems, I tend to talk like this, guys, so according to what you're telling me, Tommy, all these things that you mentioned, there might be more. So I'm just going to say it from what you're saying, right? What it seems that the best decision for you, according to what you're saying, your point of view right now at this moment, what it seems that the best for you would be this. How do you feel around that? So I'm just reflecting back at them what they're saying, but I cannot tell them what to do. I couldn't, I shouldn't tell them, hey, you know what? I think you should do this. Yeah, go ahead and do this. Because the truth is, again, I might be wrong. Or they might have not provided enough information for me to tell them what to do. And normally, I don't have all the information to tell them what to do. So you got to be very careful with this. I've seen big gurus out there telling people what to do. And what you're doing, guys, when you're doing that, asking people to tell you what to do or seeking for people to tell you what to do is you're giving your power away. You're needing somebody else to make your own decisions. And it is a protective mechanism. We can go a little bit deeper with that. It is a protective mechanism. I'm scared of making my own decisions because then I'm going to beat myself up. But if Tommy makes my decision, then I can say that Tommy is a problem, not me. That Tommy screwed up, not me. So I'm giving the power away. The idea is to regain our power, guys, to be able to own our decisions, right? And walk exactly what we need to walk through with those decisions that we're making. But when we start asking others, it's good to ask for other opinions, guys, because we might see something that we're not seeing right now. We might get aware of something that we're not realizing. But, but we got to be very careful because in many cases, people are coming down, are going to come down with the negatives according to their own mindset, to their limiting views, their limiting beliefs, their negative beliefs. And that could also affect your decision. So again, when people come with those negative opinions, many times is their own confession of, hey, you know what? I'm scared of leaving my partner. So I wouldn't recommend that you leave your partner. 
they're not going to say like that. They're going to say, hey, you know what, Tommy? I, I wouldn't do that. They're not going to say why, but they're going to say like, you know what? I don't feel this is right for you. I wouldn't do that. Because maybe, again, they want to do it, but they're scared of doing it. So they don't want somebody else to do it because now they have to face with the idea of doing it. Listen to that again, seriously, guys. Many times people don't want you to do what they are not wanting to do. Because if you do it, you are questioning them in a harder way, indirectly, guys. You're not doing it on purpose, but indirectly, you're questioning if you want to walk away from your partner, imagine, right? And I, I tell you, oh, don't walk away from your partner. Maybe I'm scared of doing it. So I don't want you to do it because if you do it, then I have to say, okay, let, should I do it too? I don't want to go through that. That's too painful. That's too scary, whatever. So I'm going to try to keep people at bay because that is going to allow me to stay at bay. Yes, guys, that's another protective mechanism of the mind. The mind is going to try to keep you stuck, right? By looking for others to, that are stuck too. So that's why a lot of people say the people that you surround yourself, they could be other people that are stuck because you're trying to stay stuck. And as a protective mechanism, you look around that people are in the same place so that you don't feel that bad. Or on the other hand, as I was saying, somebody could try to convince you to stay where you are because you're too scared. They are too scared of moving forward. So they're projecting on you, as Greg, you were saying here, uh, they're projecting on you what they are scared of doing and they're trying to convince you not to do it. So again, it's a confession. Seriously, it sounds weird, but they're confessing to you their fears, their limitations. So you gotta be very careful, grab with a pinch of salt what people tell you. Don't throw it away right away because there might be some truth there that you might need to work with. But many times it's a problem that people need to deal with, not what you are dealing with. When I decided that I was going to quit my job and, you know, I was in a corporate job in a corporate job and I was making a lot of money, guys. Seriously, I was making a lot of money at my 19, 20 years old. Right. When I went to my father, I told him I was going to quit and I was going to do something else. That I was going to go work at a ski area for $5 an hour. It drove him nuts. And he told me I was crazy. My friends told me I was crazy, that they, they know they, that it was the, the worst idea in the world. And blah, blah. And a lot of people had their opinions on what I was doing. And you know what? Most people didn't support me. And now looking back, and back then, of course, right? But now looking back at all my life and everything, I could say it was the best decision I ever made. Again, when I decided to move from the big city to come and live here into the you know, to the mountains far away from the big city, I'm, as I said, driving, it's like 18 hours on an airplane, like two hours, right? My dad said, Tommy, you're going to end up broke and you're going to come back here to the big city with nothing. He said that to me like eight years ago. No support at all. Why? There's two main things that I think he might have said that. One, he was scared of me leaving and not making it by myself, right? I still was making it by myself in the big city, but at least there, you know, I was close to them and everything. So it's like, if something happens, you know, they cannot help me because I'm not as close, right? Thing. And the other one, because he didn't want me to be far away. So he was scared of it. He might have felt some type of abandonment, you know, lack or something. And he attacked my idea so that he could try to convince me to stay. So did it have to do with my decision? For me, it was the best decision I could ever make. But again, a lot of people didn't support me when, that, when I brought that up, that decision. So again, negative opinions are normally people are confessing you about their false beliefs, their fears, their limitations. And they're not going to say it like that. They're going to say, hey, you know, Mary, I'm so scared of you doing this. No. They're going to say, hey, you know what? I don't think it's a good idea. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would stay and do this over here. And they're going to try to convince you because they are freaking scared. And they don't want to face their fears. So they rather, in a way, push you not to face your fears. Because if you face your fears, in a way, you're telling them, hey, you have to face your fears. Again, even indirectly. But when you do that, people get freaking scared guys thank you jp that's the idea with this to realize that we can listen to opinions 
but don't take it personal and understand that most of the time people are talking about themselves. So grab it with a pinch of salt, take what could work for you, throw away whatever else, because a lot of people stick in their head like, oh, my dad said this was not going to work. My dad said I was going to end up broke coming back to the big city with nothing. And I keep, you know, staying that in my mind and bothering me and carrying this around. No, I just understood that it was him, that it was his own limitations, his own fears. Boom. And I just got rid of it. And it still took my decision. I still came to the mountains and it was the best decision I could ever make. Right now, it's winter over here. I'm surrounded by snow. It's beautiful over here. And I love it, guys. I love the life that I've changed. In a couple of weeks, the ski area is going to open. We have the season ski path that it's a bargain for us. So I'm going to go start. I'm going to start skiing. You're going to start seeing videos of me skiing in the mountains. So it was the best thing that could have happened to me. But according to a lot of people, I was making the worst decisions in my life, quitting my job, my corporate job, right? Moving to the States, then coming back to Argentina, then moving into the suburbs, then moving to another state. Everybody has their saying, guys, on whatever decision you're going to make. The more you share, the more opinions you're going to get. But if you understand that an opinion is just a person sharing with you their own limitations, when it's negative, right? You can, again, check it out to see if there's something you might not be seeing, you might not be aware of, check it out, but tend to pay more attention to the positive comments. Hey, you know what? Awesome that you're moving to the sour. Did you think about this? Did you think about that? Are you, what are you gonna do with this? What are you gonna do with that? Whatever, right? But use it, the try to, to filter and you know find those positive you know, uh, opinions to use them to grow. But a lot of people, without doing it on purpose, are going to try to bring you down. And that's on them because of their own limitations. Getting other words out of our mind is something that I work on. I think some part, I may believe something they said. There you go. There you go. Thank you, JP. The idea is to understand that it is a limitation on them, not on you. If it bothers, if it sticks in my head, because I need to work on that too, don't get me wrong. But I need to understand that that's on head them. Separate responsibilities, guys. Because again, if not, if I start listening to every people, every people's opinions, right? And when, most so when they're a negative and I start carrying them around, my life is going to go sideways, guys. So if I'm still holding on to things, I, I need to understand why. What is it that I do believe about what this person said? Then understand that whatever they said, it's on them. I'm going to keep with the part that I need to work on and work on that part, guys work on releasing that because if not i was there for many years jp seriously i was there carrying what other people would say to me although i was able to get through it and do it all the same as i said i i, I quit my corporate job and you know a lot of people were against me when i started my business about first aid rescue training most people were against it my friends my family loved ones we're against it. We're telling you, Tommy, are you sure what you're doing? I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't do this. You know, Red Cross is out there. They're going to destroy you. You're not be able to compete with Red Cross, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I heard so much crap out there of what I was doing and I shouldn't do it. And you know what, guys? That company turned to be one of the biggest companies in Latin America. I was able to go to the States and offer training, go to Mexico. I was able to go to Chile. I was able to go to Colombia. I was able to go to different countries around the world to offer lectures, to offer training because of the, you know, of the knowledge, the experience I had been able to learn, process, and in a different way also, according to, you know, starting with mindset and all of that, seeing the way that people should look into, you know, their own stuff so that they don't get stressed out, burned out, PTSD, or even, you know, um, a suicide on emergency care. All of that brought me where I'm at. So it was the best decision in my life. But again, I had so many people against it. So I want to share this with you guys so that it can help that whenever somebody is bringing some negative stuff into your life, first of all, if it affects you, you need to check what's going on. And second of all, you got to understand that they're talking about their own limitations, not yours. If they say that it cannot be done, if they say that it's crazy, if they say that, no, this is wrong, they're talking about themselves. If 
most of the people that achieve something in this world would have listened to what they were told. We wouldn't have electricity. We wouldn't have light. We wouldn't have cars. We wouldn't have anything, guys. Seriously. Because those crazy dudes that started creating an airplane, right? The Wright brothers, right? <laughs> we wouldn't be flying nowadays if the Wright brothers were not crazy. Seriously. They were crazy according to society. So let's be a little bit crazy, guys, and allow us ourselves to dream, to think different, to make changes, guys, in any area. I tell my kids, it is nothing is impossible because there's so much that we don't know that we cannot say it's impossible. We can say right now, and I tell this to my kids, right now it might seem impossible, but we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Because if we go back 500 years, it would have been impossible to go to the moon, get out of space, get out into space, sorry, you know, fly in an airplane. It was impossible. 500 years ago, it was impossible. It was impossible to have, I don't know, cell phones, to make a call, to have wireless internet. It was impossible. Nowadays, it's like the norm, the, norm, the, the, the normal thing, guys. So it's important to realize these things. Because if not, many of your dreams are going to be crushed, guys. So I hope this helps. Let me know in the chat, guys. Type a yes in capital letters if this makes sense. If this has helped you guys deal a little bit better with what others have to say about your dreams, your plans, or whatever, so that you can are able, so that you can start moving further along in your life and not letting other people comments affect you and bring and you bring yourself down with what others are saying. So thank you, Romana, for sharing this with me. It's, it was amazing. It brought me to a lot of you know, reflection on this, writing a post. Even I'm, I'm doing this training. I'm going to do small videos on this too, some other extra posts on this, because I believe it's a big topic that needs to be you know, refreshed in our mind, you know, repeated, so that we can realize right, that whatever people are telling us, most of the time they're talking about their own fears and limitations, and that's it. It's not about us, it's about them. So thank you very much for watching on social media. If you like it again, guys, let me know, share with others, invite people to this free community. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this and loving this. So thank you very much. I'm gonna stay here on Zoom with a private community so we can continue going deeper with this and reflect a little bit more. So again, thanks a lot, guys. See you on the next, uh, remember Wednesdays, we're doing Entrepreneur Unleashed in the group of six figure uh, secret, uh, Mindset Secrets for uh, Spiritual Entrepreneurs, Coaches, and Consultants. So thank you very much. See you around, guys. Take care. Bye.